Hey guys, thanks for watching another video today. Today we're talking about charging and why now, why this video? Well, it's been a bit of a dull news week as when it comes to the Ford Lightning. Nothing really exciting has happened. Hopefully we either hear about maybe tax credit news or, or something new, but right now it just hasn't happened. You know, maybe by the end of this week, my, my later in the week video will have some, you know, cool stuff. But, you know, this is cool stuff too. It's a video I've been really wanting to make. It's just there's been all this stuff popping up that I got make a video on instead of this. But basically, I want to talk about two things today. So first is at-home charging. This is a lot of people's first electric car that they'll own, and I think it's important to kind of know your options. So I'm going to break down all of the home charging options at like a dumbed down level. And now the second thing is something that's really been bugging me. And I want to know, is it even a good time to own a non-Tesla? Because when you look at all these charging networks and, and the blue oval network, that's actually a little bit of a disaster from what I've been seeing, you know, is it too early to rely on these public chargers? And, you know, from what I've seen, it might be, but luckily I have some other, you know, news that's happened that maybe will make it so in the next couple years, all these problems that we're experiencing now should have solutions. So we're going to get into all of that right now. So up first is home charging solutions. Now, there's three main things you can get. So, well, kind of. The first thing is something that comes with all Mach-E's. It'll come with your Ford Lightning, and it's the at-home charging kit, I believe it's called. Now, Tesla comes with the same thing. And basically what it is, is it's a charger for your car that actually has two adapters on it. One that will fit a standard house outlet, so you could basically plug in the same thing you plug in, you know, like your lights in the garage or whatever you're doing there. You can use that same outlet and charge your car. So that's option number one, and that is your 120 volt, 15 amp charger. And you know, if that's good enough for you, then you're all set. Now, what that's going to provide is three miles per hour. So every hour you are charging, you're adding three hours of range to your car. So that could take up to two days to get a full battery. Like that's not, you know, ideal for a lot of people, but it is a solution for people like me who I basically drive every other day. Or if I do, I'm barely putting on more than like 20 miles a day. So I can, you know, have not a full battery and then just you know, replenish what I use in that day. I could actually do that, but that's not the best solution for me, I don't think. And it's probably not for you either. So let's talk about the second thing you can do. And that is uh, probably a term you've heard a lot, the NEMA connector. And there's a way to get this installed from an electrician. And now you can either just call them up and have them tap into your breaker and, you know, install it for you. And I do recommend getting this. This is actually the one that I'm going to do for my car or truck. Sorry. That's another thing you guys like to comment about is when I call a truck or car. It's all the same thing, guys. Um, anyway, the NEMA 1450 is a solution that's going to get you 20 miles for every hour you charge it. And here's what I recommend doing. For about $65, you can go to Home Depot and buy everything you need. Now you're gonna need to buy the cable. You're gonna need to buy a new breaker to put into your breaker box. And then you're also going to need the outlet itself. All of those you can get at Home Depot. And you, you should, what I recommend doing is actually buying all of that and then calling an electrician to install it because they will probably charge you double if they're using their own parts to do this. And actually some of them might not even let you use your own parts because they want to charge you more or, or whatever reasons. Maybe it's a safety thing, but that's what I recommend doing. I've heard a lot of people have success with, you know, installing them that way and saving a little money or just call them and they'll do it if money's not a big issue. But that is my, you know, that's if I had to give everyone, every new F-150 Lightning buyer a charging solution, that's 100% what I recommend. So overnight, it's going to get you a full charge, you know, for most people, assuming you're plugging it in when you get home at 6. And I think it's about, or I have it written down, it is, it'll take about 15 hours to get a full charge. So yeah, that's more than realistic if you plug it in when you get home from work. That's that. I like that. And I think you should too. Really look into that. Go Google anything. Thing you need to about the details 
And now the next thing that we have here is an actual device of sorts or, or a charging wall box that you can buy. Now you can buy it from Ford and then there's a ton of third party options that you can buy too that are pretty affordable. And these are okay. Like they all cost like between like, I guess the cheapest is that I've seen is like 300 ish. There's some real off brand ones that are cheaper, I think, but between that and like seven or 800. And what these do is actually tap in and get you a little more amperage. So basically just to compare the NEMA thing that we were talking about, that's about 30 amps. And again, that gets you 20 miles per hour. And these boxes range between 40 amps and 48 amps. So Fords, for instance, if you buy there, it's called the Ford Connected Charge Station. That's a 48 amp, and that's actually going to get you 30 miles per charging. So that's 10 more miles per every hour charging. Now, if you have like the extended battery, that's probably a reason to get this. But everyone else, I think, is just fine doing the, the NEMA that's going to do 20 miles per hour. And then, again, there's those third-party box options, but a lot of them are actually only 40 amp. So those are going to give you 26 miles per hour right in the middle. So you, for every type of charging lifestyle, there's basically a solution for you. So I'll quickly break it down by throwing this on the screen. And what this is, it shows the NEMA that we talked about, and that'll get you a, f and what it does is from Ford. So the, the top number in this thing where it says 14 hours versus 19 hours, the top is the standard battery and the bottom is the extended battery. So the Ford uh, mobile charger that comes with it, that NEMA outlet, it'll get you 14 hours for the standard and 19 hours for a full charge on the extended battery. And now that's why I was saying maybe if you have the extended battery and you need to charge full a full tank, if you will, overnight, then you probably do want this box just to, you know, for that safe, that mental reliability that you know you're going to have a full charge for work. Uh, I can't believe I just said tank early. <laughs> uh, you guys, uh, thank you for knowing what I mean. And everyone else, uh, I don't know what to say. So it looks like there's also the Ford Charge Station Pro, which don't quote me, I don't even know if this is out yet, or at least I haven't seen it in action. And I'd, I'd be lying if I said I knew a lot about it. So you can just look at the numbers there. And then finally, we have uh, an Electrify Ameri America charger. And that kind of leads us into this whole second half of this video. But... One thing before I move on of just about, let's say you can't do any of the price, the things I talked about. You, you don't have a home charger. Maybe you live in an apartment or you have street parking. Now, if that's your solution, you're kind of stuck using just Electrify America and or, you know, ChargePoint or, or some of these public charging options. And I did a quick like estimate and it's a total estimate. So if you, for instance, have Electrify America's um, pro plan, I think it's called, it's $4 and what you get is a discount every time you charge. So that's some, something you're going to need if you don't have a home charger. And even with that, a zero to a hundred charge. Now that is something you hopefully will never do. It's usually going to be like 15 to 80. Uh, that's going to cost around $30 for every charge. So do the math yourself. Is that actually going to save you money versus a gas car if you don't have a home charger? I don't know. I don't know your life. Do the math, but like something to consider for sure. Okay. So a quick summary. I know we just kind of talked about a lot of different options, but if, you're, if you skip to this part or whatever, uh, if you're just joining us, <laughs> uh, which I guess can happen on YouTube, a lot of people like to zip. Anyway, I recommend, again, the NEMA charger. It you, you get the charger with your car, so that part's free. You don't have to buy the box. You just have to pay for an electrician to come in and install the NEMA 1450 outlet at your house, and you're good to go. I think that's going to be more than perfect for basically every Ford Lightning buyer. Okay, home charging out of the way. Let's talk about kind of the elephant in the room, if you will. And it's about public charging and the charging network. And now we're going to leave Tesla out of this because they actually have kind of a reliable solution and, you know, way less people complaining about it. So this is where I want to answer if you're a Ford F-150 Lightning buyer or even a Mach-E buyer or any non-Tesla EV buyer, 
is the world ready for a mass amount of us to start owning these? Because there's still a ton of issues. So the first big thing was documented by MKBHD when he did a really great video of traveling in both an ICE vehicle, a Tesla, and a Mach-E. And the Mach-E, their road trip was a disaster. And the main thing was every time they wanted to be directed to the correct location of a charger, they most of them were out of operation or extremely slow. And that kind of sums up what I'm about to get into. But if you use the navigation on your screen of that comes with your Ford and you follow that like you do on a Tesla where it says, OK, you're going to need to stop here, charge and here to charge. And then you should make it to your destination right on time. Well, if one of those places that you land, you can't actually charge at. <laughs> you have a low battery and the next one is nowhere near, which could be the case, you're kind of screwed. So that's a very, very big real issue. And if you are traveling really far on these EVs, I honestly can say you probably aren't ready. We're, the, the world isn't ready for you to own an electric car yet. And it's a sad reality. I don't like having to say that out loud, but it's just the fact, you know? So th that's the first reason is these broken chargers and they're everywhere. So if you don't have a reliable network that reports an out charger, then there's a big problem. A uh, kind of con combined issue with that is not necessarily that it's broken, but it's a really slow charger or that it's sharing the grid with another charger right next to it. So if someone next to you is charging, you're slowing at, you're, you're charging at a very slow pace. And now that at least you're not stranded. That's not the issue. It's more of you're, you're just getting to your destination a lot slower where you thought you were charging at a 150 kilowatt place. That's going to get you almost fully charged in about an hour. You're actually at, you know, 10 <laughs> or getting 12 and then it takes you two hours and then you can't make it home in time. I don't know. These are random scenarios, but it's still an issue. So that was kind of two combined, but that was both, you know, a reliability of finding the right charger if it's not working but also power inconsistencies. And the biggest issue is like, if you're not really invested, like if you just buy this car cause it looks cool and you don't know all about charging, you can just run into this problem. Like it's not very like basic consumer friendly. Now, if you're someone who's watching these videos, that's probably not someone who would run into an issue like this because you kind of are, you know, educating yourself and you know all about it. But if Joe Schmo walked in, bought a Mach-E and relied on this, he's the type of person who would kind of be screwed. <laughs> so it's, it's, I don't know. It, it is definitely an issue. Now, another big thing that I've heard a lot of people complain about is pricing inconsistencies. So I think this varies state to state where some people will either charge by the kilowatts that you're outputting from the machine into your car or by the time you're at the machine. And now on most cases, it actually kind of evens out once you get into like a longer charge. But there's some places like let's get back to that first scenario where you land there, someone else is charging and it's uh, you're paying by time. But it takes two hours because you're only getting, you know, 15 kilowatt per hour. You're paying a ton of money when you should be getting a faster rate. And again, it's another problem. And now I'm going to talk about a problem that is kind of just for my state because I only looked into my state. I recommend you go to ChargePoint's website and go to uh, Electrify America's website. And then I don't really recommend using the Ford Blue Oval Network. Let's talk about that real quick. So I tried to use that location finder. And it is a nightmare. I know they use Electrify America and a couple other brands in their net in their network, but it's here's what happened. So uh, I probably have this on the screen right now. Basically, what I did is I typed in Grand Rapids. That's where I live, and it showed I think 15 available chargers. And I said great, but then I said, well, I want it to be over 50 kilowatt per hour. So I toggled that, and then I said, well, let's make sure it's in the Blue Oval network because that's probably what I'd subscribe to if I were getting, you know, once I'm driving the Ford Lightning. So when I had these, it went down to two available chargers. When you do that and like a whole like map view, it literally cuts everything by like 90 percent. That's insane, and it just goes to show, at least in my state, like the available chargers are, are very hard to find. So the final thing I want to talk about is the rate at which new chargers are being built. It's actually really small. So in a recent publication, 
uh, I have this chart on the screen. It, it looks nice here, but it actually indicates an average of 7% increase in new chargers. And that's just not enough. So that all being said, I'm getting real grumpy and pessimistic, it sounds like. But I have good news. I've got really good news. There's a lot of things that will take a while to, to kick in here, but we'll basically start to stomp out these issues. So the first thing I want to document is an article that Ford was in recently about sending angels or people that they're hiring to go out to these stations that they don't even own to, to make sure that they're accurate and working. Uh, I don't know the exact details of this. I think it was like a off comment thing that someone on Ford's electric team said in an interview. Hopefully this has started, but I think it's smart it, because they're going to get all of their customers complaining and complaining because they got stranded or whatever. So if they have some sort of infrastructure in place to get these fixed and reliable again, you know, that's a huge step forward. So we can look forward to that. That's going to really help things. Now, this next one's a little far out. I don't know how soon they're going to implement this, but Ford recently had like this post about this cool charging technology where they can actually like, I can't, I think it was like they could 4X some of their rates of charging. Now, this will only work if the cars that you're charging are compatible with doing that. And you have to also account for the grid it's tapped into and all these other factors. So this probably won't be, you know, at, at actually usable for the next couple of years. But it's cool to know that they're thinking that far ahead. So this cooled charging cable technology, basically, it'll, you know, the biggest thing that I see that helping with is if we have these limited amount of chargers everywhere, it'll at least get people in and out. So you're not waiting for a charging spot. Or if you are, you're not waiting for a two hour charge in front of you because there's only two spots. And then you have a two hour charge. Like that's just a world nobody's ready to live in. So things like this that get charging done faster and more reliable are just home runs in my opinion. And then the final thing is the new infrastructure bill that was just passed. And basically what that was, was $7.5 billion in EV charging to get 500,000 public stations in America by 2030. Yeah, that's super far off in my opinion. But if they get started now, we saw that graph earlier that we're only at about 25,000. So this is a huge jump. Even if it takes, if they could do 50,000 a year, that already, you know, that's a 200% increase in chargers. So the fact that this is a priority really helps things. Now, what was that very first question or that biggest question I asked in this video? And it was, is it too early to own a Ford F-150 Lightning that in this world we live in now? And there's actually some people that I think it's not a great world for it. And and basically what it comes down to is if you can't do your day-to-day -day function off a one full battery or a battery and a half, it's not going to be a reliable solution for you. And the reason I think that is if you're doing more that like if you're doing 400 miles a day and you have a 250 range and you have to count all these charges into your day and you are looking at all these unreliable chargers, and it's just, it doesn't make sense to me. So if you can rely on your home charging, then yes, this is, it's time, do it, buy the car and have a blast like that. You, you and I, we can go hang out. I can't wait to do it. But I do think there's people who are heavy drivers who really should look into this stuff because if you buy this car, you're going to end up not liking it only because it's not reliable. And it's, what sucks is it's not really the car's fault. It's more of just the infrastructure's fault. So another final thought I have is like all of the naysayers who are watching this and say, maybe like I told you so that it's not ready. And for some people it's not, that's just a fact. But the, the, ba the biggest thing I want people to get out of this video is that we're making good steps forward and we're actually taking a big step towards this great electric future of, awesome cars that go super fast and are really fun. But enough talking. This was probably a really long video. So thank you guys so much for watching it all. Uh, I don't have anything else to say, but let's all cross our fingers for some, you know, banging news right around the corner. How, oh, man, 
we're due. We're way overdue for just like some exciting new stuff to happen. So keep an eye out for that. And thank you guys all again. I, I love you all. You're the best. Bye.